It's crucial to remember on these long rides that the roads aren't shut. There's, there's going to be cars and trucks going by you all the time. Cars and bikes don't mix. When they hit each other, the bikes lose. That's why it's so important to ride single file. If there is an opportunity to have to react very quickly and you're riding overlapping wheels are very, very close together, the chances of taking somebody down with you if you go down is very, very high. Bicyclists have to ride single file and allow the uh, as far over to the right of the roadway as possible. This allows the uh, motoring public to get around them safely. Bicyclists have the same responsibilities and they're granted the same rights uh, of the road as, as all motorists. In fact, I encourage my officers to uh, vigorously enforce the stop sign laws relating to bicyclists because it's such a dangerous thing to run a stop sign. They most invariably are severely injured or killed. Any law enforcement officer having jurisdiction in where the event is could actually uh, pull a bicycle over uh, the bicyclist and write a citation and uh, the person would then either have to pay a fine or go see a judge. Hand signals that I think are really helpful. Um, the, the people who are in front who are seeing something can either point down to the rock or the, uh, the hole in the road. So you just point with your index finger straight down and you do it far enough ahead that the people behind you had the opportunity to take evasive action. Gravel. It happens all the time in group rides. People do alert other people to a degree, and especially potholes. Railroad tracks, often they'll call out tracks up or car turning or car ahead or car behind. It's really important to communicate. Car back. Car back. Car back. Car back. Car back. Car back. When you're riding and you're going to be turning left, you stick out your left arm at a right angle to your body. If you're going to be turning right, you have two options. You can stick out your right arm at a right angle, or you can put your left arm up in a 90 degree angle. If you come to a stop sign or a stop light, put your left arm behind you out so that people behind you can see it. Don't just come up into a rest area and try to turn right into that rest stop. Try to anticipate that in advance. You can just put your hand out and just indicate that you're stopping or slowing down. Or you can verbally communicate, I'm stopping, I'm pulling off to the right. So just be courteous. When you're pulling out of a rest stop or you pulled off the side of the road for any reason and when you're trying to merge back into to the group ride, it may seem obvious that you need to be aware of what's going on, but it's particularly important after you've stopped. You just need to make sure that you have plenty of room to merge into the rider line and make sure that once you start riding, you really ride. Recently, these nasty little things have appeared on our highways called rumble strips. And so if you come upon them um, out of nowhere, please signal to the people that are behind you or around you, and most importantly the people that are behind you because you should be riding single file. When you come on a rumble strip, try to avoid it. Try to keep looking ahead so that you see them coming up and you can take evasive action. Sometimes though, you have to go over it for whatever reason. There's just no way you can avoid them. In that case, try to slow down, keep your arms loose and your legs loose, so that if you do hit it and you wobble a little bit, you can recover quickly and keep riding in a straight line. Always ride single file in these events. The exception, obviously, is when you're passing somebody, in which case you say, passing on your left. You stick out your left arm. I would make, take a quick look back behind my shoulder, make sure there's no car or truck bearing down on you, make sure it's safe, look ahead, make sure there's no debris, and, and quickly go around the person in front of you. Some people have little bells on their bikes that they'll go dingling as a courtesy to let people know they're coming by. Everybody wants to become Lance Armstrong on the descent. It's really, really critical to have your hands on the brakes. 
You need to look far, far ahead. Don't look at the cyclist in front of you. Look far ahead to the next curve in the road. Make sure you understand where the guardrails are, where the edge of the road is, and where the sharp turns are. When you're braking, don't overreact. Don't overbrake. There's so many people who get going too fast and they put on their brakes way too hard. They can skid, they can cause problems for people behind them. I would suggest that you pump your brakes. If there's no shoulder, obviously they, uh, they're going to have to ride on the travel portion of the roadway, but it still does not relieve them from responsibility as being far to the right as possible. When you're wearing a helmet, it's very important to make sure that it fits correctly. The front of the helmet should come right over your forehead. It should not be back on your head. The two straps should come down on either side of your ear and make a V close right underneath your earlobe. Obviously, the bottom strap should be hooked up under your chin. The helmet should not wobble too much, so you need to put pads in inside the helmet to make sure that it's, it fits snugly on your head. The thing that is so discouraging for me is when I get back out on the highway and find bananas and energy bar wrappers lying on the street. I, I don't certainly want people coming through my neighborhood throwing trash, and I respect the neighborhoods and the people um, who haven't allowed us to come into their communities, and I think we owe them the common courtesy and respect not to litter. Always, always, always ride single file. Obey all traffic laws. Ride sensibly. Wear your helmet. Ride to the right as far as possible. Share the road. And have fun.